Captain Mike's Rigging Station. Powered by Florida Sport Fishing TV. What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike. Welcome back to my rigging station. Listen, I say it every episode, and I'm going to say it again. Proper preparation is absolutely vital to success. Saltwater fishing here in Florida, inshore or offshore, I don't care what venue. If you're not properly prepared, you're not going to come out on top. Today, we're going to talk about snapper. It's August, it's the full moon, and what does that mean down here in the Florida Keys especially? It's the mangrove snapper spawn. Anglers, both resident and visiting anglers, look forward to this time of the year all year long. The fishing explodes at the July full moon and the August full moon. Two peak periods when all of these mangroves, countless numbers of fish, they migrate down here to these outer reef edges to do their duty right and I'll tell you the fishing can be fire but it's all about the details like with all other fisheries while you can catch mangrove snapper around the state certainly here it's a very special event this time of the year and I want to talk you through step by step in detail how to cash in on this hot bite for starters timing we know like I said even though you can catch mangroves year round that July full moon couple days before a couple days after and the August full moon same thing couple days before a couple days after is when the fishing peaks time of the day look if you can get out here at night and fish these patch reefs at night it's almost a sure thing the mangrove snappers are nocturnal they bite pretty much all night long and that's going to be a peak period However, you could also catch them during the day, especially early in the morning. That's the key, is to get out there early in the morning, especially if you're looking for a better grade of fish. While there are countless fish that are keepers in the 12 to 16 inch range, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the next grade up, really that 16 to 24 inch size. That's really what we're after. Look. You know as well as I do, there's places way out in the Gulf of Mexico, up off the East Coast, way offshore, where you can catch some really giant macros. Super slobs, five to 10 pounds, some even larger. It's rare that you're gonna find a mangrove snapper over five or six pounds on the patch reefs here in the Keys. Certainly every now and then, but it's rare. So that's really not what we're looking for. It's more of those three to five pound fish really healthy, strong fighters, and I'll tell you what, perhaps the best tasting snapper on the dinner table of all snappers, arguably, that's for sure. So we're gonna get out there early. We're gonna leave at the crack of dawn. I wanna be anchored, I wanna be chumming as that sun is coming up over the horizon. I know that I've got a small window, maybe till 9, 10 a.m. at the very most before that bite typically shuts down. I might be able to pick those smaller keeper size fish all day long, but those bigger ones that I'm after, it's gonna be that dawn bite, okay? It really is. So I've gotta get an early start. Where am I fishing? There's so many patch reefs from Key Largo to Key West, you couldn't fish them all in a lifetime. So I really look for distinguishing features that I know the mangrove snapper have a preference for. Ledges, caves, drop-offs, okay? They like all that rock, but they really prefer the ledges. So I'm using my Furuno fish finder, my chart plotter, I'm using Seymour charts, any tool that I possibly can to key in on specific areas where there are sharp drop-offs in 30 to 35 feet of water, usually 32, 34, 38 even. Certainly sometimes deeper, but that's really that magic zone is in that 32 to 38 feet, you know, that range right there. I'm in Marathon. I'm fishing anywhere from Bahia Honda, Big Pine, to Isle Morada. So I've got a big area to fish. I'm gonna focus on, you know, spots where I've caught them before because mangrove snappers are creatures of habit, especially during the spawn. If you caught them in one area during that spawning period, I promise you, you go back to next year, they're gonna be there again. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. If you're new to the area, unfamiliar with where to start, look, Network, talk to local bait shops, charter captains, local fishermen, fishing clubs, the internet. I don't care if you send smoke signals up there, but you gotta have a place to start. 
If you get out there, you start chumming, you start fishing, and you don't catch any of those larger mangroves in 20 to 30 minutes, pick up and move. Okay, pick up and move. I'm literally giving it 30 minutes at the very most to get those fish up in the slick. Oftentimes, it's instant. They're there. As soon as you get there, I know they're gonna be there. It's that key spawning period that we all look forward to. And oftentimes, it's literally gonna be right away. But not always, so I do give it a little bit of time. It also depends on the conditions. Ideal conditions include wind and current in the same direction. I want the chum to be flowing off the back of the boat. If the chum is flowing under the boat, it makes it incredibly challenging to coerce the snappers, especially the bigger grade, the healthier grade of the mangrove. So just keep that in mind. If you don't find ideal conditions, move. Give it a half hour at the most, and then either go up or down the reef, you know, east or west. A few miles might be all that it takes to find better conditions. Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Tubro fishing, four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I can focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drifted Technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. Chaos. Gear matters. Oh my god! That right there, baby, is deep dropping. Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Deep Glow outshines the competition. With a robust housing, durable glass dome, and stainless steel hardware, Deep Glow lights are the toughest, brightest, and easiest to install. Throw them in, plug them in, and let the show begin. I've literally created my own feeding frenzy. Residential or commercial, one or 50 lights, Deep Glow increases property values, creates loyal customers to waterfront businesses, and provides years of trouble-free service. Tell them Captain Mike sent you and receive a free timer. Once we get to the area we're gonna fish, there's some things that we do to increase our score. First, we'll immediately put a chum bag in the water before we even anchor. The chum goes in the water. Do a couple of figure eights, couple of big circles around the area, get that scent flowing, start to get those fish <laughs> sniffing around going, hey, what's about to happen here? So we wanna get them fired up as quickly as we can. I'll then position the boat appropriately based on the wind and the current to make sure that my chum is flowing off the back of the boat over those sharp ledges and drop-offs where I know those snappers are held up. Once we're tight, we're tight on the anchor. We've come back into position. The chum is flowing behind the back of the boat. Everything is looking good. We haven't put a bait down yet. We're taking our time here. We don't want to spook these fish. Remember, during the spawn, there's big numbers of mangroves, but the majority of them are in that 12 to 16 inch range. Yeah, they're keepers and they're fun to catch, but we're looking for the next grade of fish, the 16 to 24 inch fish, okay, the bigger grades. And yeah, you know, you know as well as I do. Look, you can run way out into the Gulf of Mexico, up off of the East Coast, you can run way offshore, and that's where you're gonna find the giant mangroves. I'm talking fish that are, you know, eight pounds, eight to 10, some even more giants we don't see those here on the patch roofs let's be honest in that 32 to 35 feet of water very very rarely are we ever going to see a mangrove that's an honest six to eight pounds once in a while but rarely we're really looking for those three to five pound fish which are quality they're a lot of fun to catch on the appropriate tackle they're a bigger grade of fish and i'll tell you what arguably the absolute best tasting of all snapper. 
Okay? So we're there. We're there early before everybody else is, because I'll tell you what, once that fleet shows up, eh, it's done. So we're there early, we've got our chum flowing. Now it's a matter of deploying baits. Key bait, I've said this before, and I'm gonna tell you again, listen to what I'm saying to you. If you wanna catch the larger mangrove snapper, you need large baits. You need a live bait, like a beautiful, small to medium size, healthy pinfish. That's key right there. The only other bait that I count on is a fresh ballyhoo. And I catch them using the ballyhoo. I'm anchored up, I'm chumming. There's ballyhoo swimming up the slick. I don't wanna throw a cast net, really noisy, spook everything around. I'm gonna deploy a ballyhoo and I'm gonna scoop up a whole bunch of fresh ballyhoo. It's so, so simple. And that's gonna be my secondary bait. In either scenario, we use the same rig. You know, there used to be a day when we used to go reef fishing and mangrove fishing and bring a truckload of gear and all sorts of different types of rigs. And, you know, we've really simplified it all, but not only is it easier, it's even more effective. For starters is my basic go-to reef rod. It's a Chaos Gold conventional rod uh, rated for 12 to 20 pound line, nothing super fancy, okay? Affordable, very versatile, matched to a Shimano Torium 16, little workhorse of a conventional reel, plenty of line capacity, not that you're concerned with that because you're only fishing in 30 to 35 feet of water, but nevertheless, plenty of line capacity, super smooth, star drag, easy to operate. I can count on this little crank horse here. You know, that's what I call it. It's just a, an awesome little conventional reel. Fresh line is vital, no question. Fresh 20 pound diamond line, that's what I've got the reel spooled with. From there, I've got oh, I would say 12 to 15 feet of leader material. 20 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon. That's it right there, that's all that you need. Sometimes I'll also bring a spool of 30 if the fish are being really aggressive or some larger fish in the area, which we'll talk about in a minute, I might bump it up, but nothing more than that. I connect that 12 feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon to the main running line with a blood knot. Very, very simple. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We talked a lot about tackle, a lot about finding these fish, staying on them. Got you. All right, all right. Nice job. What a fish. Oh, yeah, that's a fat one right there. That's what we want. Oh, nice one. Look at that one. Got you. Nice. That's a tuna. That's what it's all about. Right there. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. From there, what seals the deal is so simple. Look, it's a jig head. That's all that it is. Let me, let me show you my container here. It's vital that you head out reef fishing with a variety of jig heads. 
Okay, again, I've said it before and I'm gonna drill it into your head because it's that important. Jig heads are where it's at when it comes to patch reef fishing here in the Florida Keys. It simplifies everything. But more importantly, you're just gonna be a more successful angler, but it's important that you're using the correct jigs, okay? You can see that's got a flat head. Some people call it a boxing glove type jig. It's got a flat head, sits on the bottom, just like this. Live pinfish right here, hook through the lips. He's got his face stuck into the bottom. He has no idea of who's coming in behind him to suck him down, okay? So the right jig head. Drop that to the bottom straight down and hold it very still. Okay, you want it to be sitting on the bottom. That is the key. If you're deploying it through the water column, you're not gonna fool those larger snappers. The big mangroves, they don't want that bait coming through the water column. They want that bait sitting right on the bottom, sitting still. And then they'll investigate it, they'll look at it, and then they will commit right there. And as soon as you feel that thump, you've gotta hit them because that hard thump is that mangrove snapper inhaling that live pinfish. A small to medium pinfish. You don't want a palm-sized pinfish because obviously even the larger mangroves aren't gonna be able to suck that down. If all you can get are the larger pins, then cut them. Cut them in half diagonally. The head is a killer bait. When it comes to the ballyhoo that we caught with the ballyhoo, a whole live ballyhoo, a small to medium whole live ballyhoo is, man, that's candy. If you have large ballyhoo, cut the tail off, cut the head off, fish to plug. You could also butterfly a ballyhoo, but those are the two key baits and they're both fished exactly the same way. Now, in addition to my go-to conventional rod, there are a couple other outfits that I bring for specific reasons. One in particular is a relatively light spinner, but it's really, really strong. This is a six and a half foot spinning outfit. I gotta be honest with you, the rod is actually a spinning jigging rod, a slow pitch uh, spinner, okay? But who says you can't use it in this fishery? It's perfect for this as well. It's matched to a Shimano Twin Power 5000 loaded with 20 pound braid. The same 20 pound leader, nothing is different. I've got 12 feet a leader. And again, this is the same on both outfits. Why? Because it's stealthy, but every fish I'm feeling that leader. If it's nicked, if it's abraded, anything, I'm cutting the foot off and I'm retying. Otherwise, it will fail on the next big fish and you're gonna be pissed at yourself. So make sure you fish a long leader that you can snip pieces off of. Now there is a slight difference with this rig. Okay, it's the only other variation that I will do. I'll fish the jig heads, that's my go-to. That's what you're gonna see me fishing most of the time. And then I may go to what's called, you know, not a fish finder rig, but a knocker rig. Don't confuse the two. A fish finder rig includes a sliding egg sinker, but there's a swivel, a barrel swivel that will stop it. In this particular case, this knocker rig, the sinker itself, you can see will slide all the way down to the hook, and it will sit right on the hook, right there. Speaking of the hook, it's a VMC 3.0 inline tournament circle hook, or you can use a 3.0 sure set circle hook. Either way, 3.0 seems to be the right size. But I do want to point something out. Do not use something like a Nemesis circle hook. Here's a tip for you. Look, that's a 3.0 circle hook. That's a 3.0 circle hook. But that hook right there is 3X. It's three times as strong. It's got a much thicker shank and you know a thicker gauge. That's a tuna hook. We use that for yellowfin tuna. You certainly don't need that for the mangroves. You need a thinner, stealthier hook. It's number 7385 is the ideal hook for you there. You take that knocker rig. Here's where the key is. The bigger mangroves, that bigger grade of fish that we're looking for, they're smarter than all of those schooling, you know, 12 to 16 inch fish. The bigger fish are gonna be hanging further back in the chum slick and right on the bottom. So it's nice to be able to take a spinning outfit with either, again, either a live pinfish or a ballyhoo, and to be able to just very casually and easily chuck that into the back of the slick, way back there, as far as we want. Chuck it back there, let it sink, let it sit on the bottom. Of course you can do it with a conventional outfit too, but it's a little bit easier and just a change of pace with the spinner, okay? Those bigger mangroves, like I said, 
expect them to be back and on the bottom behind this mass of fish that are practically eating off the chum bag right here. So that's a really important tip for you to keep in mind. Fresh bait is vital in today's highly pressured fisheries and no one makes it easier to catch live bait than the bally hoop. With a complete line of collapsible hoop nets and accessories, the bally hoop is a must have for every angler. Simply deploy the bally hoop and watch the magic. With the bally hoop, catching live bait is clean, fast and simple. Ask for the bally hoop at your local tackle shop or visit us online to find a dealer near you. Dependable terminal tackle, it's vital in every venue. That's why professional anglers targeting bonefish to blue marlin rely on diamond fishing products. With an extensive selection of the finest monofilament, fluorocarbon, and braided fishing line in the world, it's time you avoid the rest and rig with the best. Diamond fishing products, the official line of Florida Sport Fishing TV, tournament winning fishing teams, and busy charter captains from coast to coast. Now, we do bring one other outfit for special occasions because, you know, that's one of the things that I absolutely love about patch reef fishing here in the Keys, the variety. Every single day is different. And every time you drop a bait to the bottom, you don't know what you're gonna catch. You don't know what's lurking down there. Certainly, we're targeting mangrove snappers, right? No question. And oftentimes, that's gonna be predominantly what you catch. But then every now and then you'll drop a bait to the bottom and man, you just get your clock clean. You just can't stop them no matter what you do. And maybe this happens two or three times in a row. But well, what does that tell you? It tells you that there's some larger bottom fish down there, right? That you're under gun. You went to a bear fight with a butter knife and that's not gonna work, pal. Okay, it could be groupers. It could be bigger mutton snappers. So when I get my clock cleaned a couple times and it's gonna happen to you and those of you that have patched fished enough know exactly what I'm talking about then I'm gonna step it up I get a little bit of a heavier outfit in this case just a oh, six yeah, foot baby. six spinner it's matched to a Shimano twin power 8000 it's a little bit of a larger reel the same 20 pound braid however the difference here is I beefed up my leader and went from 20 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon to 30 pound fluorocarbon a little bit heavier because I know I can get away with it with the larger snappers, the muttons, and the groupers. The jig, I beef it up. I went from a three eighths or a half ounce to three quarters or even one ounce. Same style jig right there with that boxing glove design, lays right on the bottom, but it's got a larger hook. I go to an even larger pinfish or an even larger ballyhoo, and I'll drop that down. Okay, and it just puts a bigger, heavier outfit in my hands when I really believe that there's some bigger fish down there. Now, again, you and I know that it seems whenever you're refishing, rarely do the fish cooperate and eat the right bait on the right rod. So, you know, you're not gonna win every battle. And that's what refishing is all about. You win some, you lose some. You're gonna burn through a lot of tackle, there's no question. So make sure that you have spares and extras of everything. We bring multiple outfits in the same class, rigged and ready. Because especially during that key period, in the morning, early in the morning, I don't have a lot of time. I know that I've got a small window. And the last thing that I want to do is be fumbling around, having to re-rig rods, even though I bring plenty of extra leader and plenty of jig heads, the rods are rigged. There's a set of four of each one of them. I can just reach back and grab one. If you don't have that, you know, uh, that ability to do that, then like I said, just make sure that everything that you need is handy, ready to go so you're not fumbling around burning time. Couple key tips that I wanna mention in closing. Look, 30 minutes at the most. If, the, if you're not finding what you're looking for, get out of there, move, okay, move. Plenty of chum. You're gonna burn through a block of chum with good conditions in 30 to 60 minutes. That's how much time you have. So gauge it. If you wanna fish all day, you're gonna need a couple of cases of chum. Don't show up with two seven pound boxes and think that you're ready to go. It's not gonna happen. We work with cases. We don't work with boxes, okay? Fresh bait, once again, I can't stress this enough. 
Make sure you have plenty of pinfish. We go through 50 to 100 live pinfish per trip. And then, of course, we bring that valley hoop to catch all of those fresh valley hoop. Sometimes there's speedos in the slick that we can catch with the valley hoop as well. A fresh speedo fillet, man, that's killer. That's absolutely killer for bottom fish. Positioning, this is one of those scenarios where if you're off by just a little bit, it could be a really, really big difference. So it's imperative that the boat is positioned up current of the area that you want to fish and that your chum is flowing over the ledges and the drop-offs where you're convinced those fish are held up, okay? During the spawn, if you get on them right, you've got a lot more flexibility. But any other time of the year, if you're really trying to get dialed in, you really have to fine tune those details. If you're not in the right position, if you don't end up in the right position right out of the gate, pick up the anchor and reset. It's that important. Do it as many times as you have to do it to make sure that you end up exactly where you wanna be. Once you hook those fish, take your time, you're pretty safe there. Fight them, get them up into the boat. Yep. The larger oh, mangroves yeah, use baby. a landing oh, net, you know, so none of them pop off as you're trying to flip them up. And that's really it. It's a great fishery for anglers of all ages, all skill levels. Just remember, don't overdo it. You don't need a tremendous amount of tackle, and you don't need way too many people fishing at the same time. Just two guys, three at the very most, alternating, and that's gonna keep you in the game, and it's gonna keep you tight. Connect with the crew on Instagram at Florida Sport Fishing TV. Catch our extreme seminar series at www.fsftv.com and get hooked up.